This is my setup. Uh, it is three years old and already out of date. I need an M1 chip. Uh, so there are a few things I have to adjust to, to not have to buy a computer for right now. This is my Wacom pad and I don't use this pen a whole lot. It is the Intuos Pro pen that came with the Wacom pad and this is the art pen which I use and it enables barrel rotation. I do have to use my keyboard for shortcuts and this is my mic. These are the Intuos Pro pads and you have three different sizes that you can choose from. Prices vary. You can see them uh, side by side. I have always purchased the middle one. Uh, it gives me plenty of room. This one's too squashed up for me. I tried it for a little bit and didn't really like it. And this just takes up too much room. So this is the best one for me. This is the art pen that I use. I thought I would just kind of let you know how much they are. I think you can get them on Amazon for about $89.95. But this allows, as I said, barrel rotation where the Intuos Pro pen does not. You have to adjust some settings. It's not as intuitive as this pen is. This is like a brush, literally. Very necessary for the artist. And you can also get uh, these little tablets that have your artwork within them. You can sit on your lap, kind of like an iPad, but I've never used one. This program uh, that I picked up in about 2016 for about 25 bucks, Rebel, uh, has developed into a really nice program for artists. It started out with a great watercolor engine and now it has morphed into all of the media along here that you can see. If I were starting again in digital, this is the way I would go. This is the Rebel 6 Pro, and it, I think it's selling for around $125 if you've never bought it before, or you can get an upgrade for a little less usually. What put Rebel on the map is the watercolor engine. They have oils and acrylics. This is called Express Oils. This is watercolors, inks pencils, pastels, markers, airbrushes, and then if you have your favorites, you can add them here. So if I take a flat brush here, and we have our visual settings open, you can see what happens with the default of this brush. Not a whole lot, because it doesn't have much water added. The opacity is about 65%. So let's move this up here and see what happens. So if I make another mark, you can see how it begins to spread out. If I want the paper to influence a little bit more, you can see more of that texture, and you can see the water running. It runs a little slow because I'm recording. Now let's come over here and just add a, a purple. And you can see how they'll mix together. I can change the direction that the drips go. I sometimes have used this to mix different colors in the sky. Works great. Isn't that cool? This is a painting that started as a ink sketch. Just kind of morphed into this watercolor and in ink. I wanted to show you just how this process goes. You can see all of the different layers that I have here. I've got uh, about 13 layers now. And I started with sky and added different elements to the sky and some of the ground here. This is this ground right here, more right there, uh, wall right here, trees, some of the ground over here. As you can see, this process just goes on and on. So I have uh, the inking layer locked so that I can't paint on it. I bet any of the other ones, if you don't put a lock on it, you'll accidentally come over and paint on top of them. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of, of color. Uh, I can come up here to the reference image and tap in that area. And you can see value-wise where it ends up. It's about right here. You know, our sky is up here in this value. So we don't want the ground as light as the sky value. So I'm going to go ahead and add just some of this here using a flat dry brush. I'm going to come over with a little bit of color to it. 
and this is a shadow area over here so I might come down first and with this color but I will add some of my blues and greens I'm going to come over here and maybe tap in some of the greens. And sometimes you don't always land where you want. I kind of wanted a little bit more olive. And let's put some of that color right in here. Some of that here. And you can see how it's picking up the paper texture. If I want less, I can come up here to the visual settings and I can say the texture influence I can bring it down and it will have less of that texture in it that's just personal preference whatever you would like to do with it yourself so the layer that I just added I'm going to add another one and I think I'll bring some of this lighter color in here this brush has a texture to it that I really like. Give that road a little texture up through here. Let's make this a little bit more intense, a little bit darker in value. And then I would continue to develop this. I think I'll make it a little oranger. Let's go ahead and dry that layer. Let's see what value. We're way down here in this value. I'm going to come over here into these greens. And I'm going to add another layer. And one of the good things about doing the layers like this is that you can always lighten a layer if it's too dark or you can change the color of it. I might give this a little bit more water. And you can see how that's coming together. I'm going to do a shift D which will dry it. And I'm going to come over here to my blender and I take and just blend some of that. So I'm using the same brush, it's just being used as a blender. Which is something you can't do with normal watercolor. <laughs> so you can see how pretty that makes that. Take that layer down in opacity. And let's look at the grayscale and see what. I've come up with. Okay, so I think my values are, are beginning to work and I will lighten this to close to this value right in here. So all this will get developed over here on this right side, be darker. So that's one of the really good things about being able to look at your work in grayscale. And this value scales along here are fabulous. A lot more involved. I can't show it to you all today, but I just thought it might be fun for you to see a little bit of working progress in the Rebel 6. This is Corel Painter 2022. Alright, so this is the interface. Most of your versions of Corel Painter will look like this, minus this little shortcut bar that I have right here that I've made for myself with commands that I use frequently. But you have your navigator, your commands along here, your window, you have all of these different things that you can open up to see firsthand. Uh, but most of the time I keep things pretty simple. And for the sake of this particular demonstration, I'm going to just give you the basics because this program has tons of things that you can do with it. This is your navigator, and as you work on a piece, you will see what you're doing within this navigator right here. You can uh, enlarge it or make it smaller, or you can turn it, whatever you need to do to make, um, to make it easier for you to paint with. This is your uh, color and layers 
this is one of the um, fabulous things about Corel Painter is this color picker and your U of color runs along this ring and this ring is not a traditional color wheel this is an RGB color wheel that is used for computer colors so they didn't make the traditional one which I usually keep over here so your complementary colors aren't exact in this so I keep one over here just in case I need to sample in particular areas and then come back over here and use this color wheel but one of the great things about this color wheel is what this color wheel will do within this color wheel you have the U as I said before you have the value which runs up and down this way and you have the intensity of the color so as you're working on a painting whatever color you choose you can keep track of your value and choose from that scale within in order to keep things in the proper value and proper distance and foreground it kind of does all the thinking for you so you just have to know how to use it then you can move forward in your painting and be confident in your colors and the values then you've got your color harmonies right here the color harmonies come with the option of choosing a different color harmony for your paintings you've got several to choose from right now an analogous is up uh, you've got a complementary and you've got a split complementary and so forth so whatever color you choose let's say let's go over here it's going to give you the base color so these are your complements but remember this is an RGB so a lot of times what I will do is choose my color within a particular color palette with my colors here and then I will add them to my libraries along this area then I can come over and make my own little color harmonies palette here and it works great so I can stay within a particular gamut the next part of this is the layers panel this is a ping file so that it it comes up with a layer I can drop that layer and it will all look like it's all on one but you can add your layers and begin another painting on top of that as you can see this is what I was talking about the navigator you can actually turn it if you want then double tap it will bring it back to center and level this is your toolbar this is all your commands that you would use within your painting whatever tool you're on this is the properties bar and within that property bar you will find the options that you're given uh, for any particular tool so the heart and soul of this program is your brushes this is what is going to give you the look that you really want for painting now Corel over the years has made a lot of adjustments to their brush libraries and this particular library in 2022 consists of all of these brushes so as you can see there's a lot to choose from and one of the best additions to this library in 2022 are the oils bravura brushes most of the oils for years have been kind of clunky and not very user friendly so people over the years begin to make their own brushes and I used as you can see all of these are brush categories and brushes that I have made and added to my categories and usually it readjusted some of their brushes in order to get the looks that I want so running through these brushes can be extremely time consuming and you don't get a lot of painting done so I learned early on that I needed to paint with just a few brushes I made a landscape category in 2021 and I've added to it and taken away over the years so there's different things that I have created that work well for me in my landscapes I will use maybe three brushes 
uh, because I don't want to sit and hunt for brushes. And a lot of new people tend to do that and they don't know what to stick with. And the only way I can tell you to, to get used to it is try out brushes, see what you want to use. This is a brush that a man made back in 2015. And this is called a Schmid brush. And it gave us that juicy, kind of creamy look Schmid brushes gave you. That he, uh, anyway, he named him Schmid because he was crazy about Richard Schmid's work. He made a brush dab, which would be if you were tapping the end of your brush on a canvas, you would get the end that would look something like this. If I can do that again, you can see it darker. And every time you tap down, it changes position. So this is the stroke that I get. Now, along with using these brushes, one of the things that you can do to change texture is to then come over and apply a dab stencil. And this dab stencil, which will give this some a little bit different profile, you can add uh, paper once. And right now I'm on a very plain paper. And if I drop down here to something that is very textured, which this is called window frost, you can see how it picks up that texture. So I use things like this for grasses and trees and what have you to give myself different textures to my painting. And along with the different textures, I can also add color. Double tap the blending there so you can see this. You can see the color variability that I have in here. This is on U, U variability, and this I keep my panel here in HSV. And so I've got a U, and I've got saturation of the U, and then I've got value of the U. So when this is up, as you can see there's nothing in it. You can see the difference in the color. And then I come up here and I add U to that, U variability. And your U, with whatever you've chosen here, it picks up the color to the left and the right of this ring. And the more you have it, the higher you have it, the more distance from this U ring it picks up. So, as you can see, the different colors that are coming out here. So all of these settings change these brushes. That's why I say the heart and soul really of painter are the brushes. And then the next thing you would need to learn quite a bit about is this advanced brush controls. So let's go over here and try out these oils bravura brushes. Now this category has a lot of different uh, kind of real juicy brushes in it. Um, which they didn't have before and other artists created and it took them a long time to decide that they wanted to give in and create something as other brushes, the other artists are creating. So these are the brushes that I primarily use anymore for the painting unless I want different textures. Uh, I can make things very detailed or I can make things very, very loose. However I want to do it. You can see the blending of this. So this mimics uh, traditional oil paints a lot better than any of the other brushes that are out there. And this is still, this particular brush is, uh, you can see the dab preview. And the brush stroke, when you paint with it, will look like this. The uh, dab stencil is checked and it is picking up the paper. So I've got, still have the window frost chosen. And if I come down here and let's just say I'm going to add just plain paper with nothing to it. And this is the look that I get. 
pieces. So you can see how you can, just by changing the papers, you will make a big difference in your painting. So you do have a reference image. Let's come over here and let's open up reference image. This little box opens up and I'm going to choose a painting to go in here. I'm going to enlarge this and this is one of my paintings I did a while back just to show you how this is all done. These trees in the background of this reference are created by something called papers. So I'm going to open up my papers panels, come over here and choose a paper that I made a long time ago called Tree Line. In this panel right here, you can see what it looks like. I can invert it to change the way it lays down. As you can see, scale-wise, uh, you can see images of trees within here. So I'm going to use this paper to make this background back here. And I think I will take some lavenders and use the little eyedropper tool and pick up lavenders from the background. I have these two commands checked. This one is called random grain rotation and the other is random grain position. With these checked, I get less texture coverage than if I did not have it on. It's going to give me for my background right in here. I'm going to go ahead and add some colors right here. I'll we'll just leave that the way it is. So I'm going to come over here down to a brush category that I made and go to the landscape painting. What's called a finger smudge brush make this larger and you can see how it will just slightly smudge as if you were using your finger. I'm going to take this random grain position off and this random grain rotation off and now I'm going to come back over here and sample the color. I think I'll make it a little bit deeper. I'm going to invert this and I'm going to add these trees. And these are just for texture to give a suggestion of trees. And if I need to make it a little bit larger, I can and just go over the top of this. And that will give me the beginning of my background. I'll take it off the top here. come back over here to my finger smudge brush and I'm just going to go ahead and smudge a little bit of this and that will give me kind of a nice background to go with. I may come over here and invert and then maybe come back over here and grab a little bit of this. Grab the right brush Let's add some of that in there. So I have this kind of impressionistic background going here and we'll just add to it as we need to.
And because I'm not changing the grain rotation or position on this, it's staying in the same spot. So I can invert and reinvert this and come up with it completely overlaying and giving me a little bit different look. So now I'm going to come over here and just choose maybe a paper that I use quite often called Scratch. It's actually just a bunch of limbs and twigs and stuff that um, I made into this paper and I'm going to choose a random grain rotation and I'm going to come in here and pick up some colors to use. Now if I want less grain I can check this so it will change the position and the rotation so it'll give me more of a solid look. I need a dark background for my tree to sit on. So it will pop when I begin to add it in there. And maybe I want a little bit of different texture. I want to add something a little different down here. Maybe a little bit more of these particular blues. I think I'll move it a little bit more intense. So I can add a little bit more of these, kind of this blue-green here. Something a little brighter in this foreground. Take a little bit of it there. And I'm going to add a little bit of this here. Let's make it a little bit warmer. So I'm going to add another layer just in case I want to change anything and modify this background. I can come down here and work or I can add another layer in between to add more things if I'd like. So you can make a lot of different layers. It's not unheard of for me to have sometimes 30 layers to a piece depending on how detailed it is. So I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller. And let's pick up some of this tree color along here. And I think I'll just leave it on this scratch paper and just give myself a little bit of texture for the trunk. Just move up here. And let's come on over here a little bit. Get a little bit of depth. How about if I come over here to add a red? to this side to deepen it. So that gives me kind of a nice little base to begin with. And since I'm on a separate layer, I can come over here to a layer adjuster and I can tell it to transform and I can make it a little bit skinnier. Hit enter once I've transformed it. I can move it around to wherever I want it and I think I'll leave it there and that'll be the base for my tree. So I think I'll come up here and add it, the pointed rigger brush. I'll just pick up some of this color right in here maybe just to add a few little limbs Let's come over here and choose one of these, pick up a little bit of this. Then I'm just going to kind of let this go like it is right here. So let's come over here to the rough oil. I think I'm just going to block in some of this tree here. And I'm going to give myself more opacity. Do a little bit of blocking in for this side of the tree.
a little bit bluer, but I'm keeping it in this values for something that's upright, which is going to catch less light. And what's nice about digital is you don't necessarily have to paint dark to light. You can do light to dark if you want. And if you want it to look like a painting, you just have to make sure you come back in and overlay some of those lights over the dark. So I think I need a little bit of darkness back in this area. And I'm going to come over here to maybe this red. It's leaning more towards the purple, which keeps it a little bit cooler. And I think I will add a layer here above my canvas and add some darks back in here because I want to go ahead and kind of have my composition. I do a layout grid. You can see some of my darkest darks should be in here. So I would say right around in this area. I want to do a darker color to make, you know, contrast some of this so I have at least a focal area in this particular side. I want the eye to move around and come back around here. Let's see how dark that makes that. It's kind of nice. So I just have that to work with. push this tree forward a little bit. And I'll come back up here and let's add a few more colors here. Add a round to the front. to see the versatility of digital painting. some of the lightest lights, moving it around the tree. Cool it down a little bit over here. Just continue with some of the harmony, color harmonies down in here. Bring some of that tree color in this area. Let's do some of pretty blues over here. Since this is going to be kind of the focal area uh, we can have some of these brighter colors in this area. Okay, I think I'm going to add another layer here. And I'm going to take some of these greens. I'm going to make a bigger brush. And just add some of that in here. This is a very light touch, so my color is going to be really light. 
if I bear down, you can see what happens. And that is the glory of uh, the art pen. It picks up much better on light touches uh, and heavy touches than the Intuos Pro. I think I'll come back up to this brushy brush that I was using before. I think I'll come over here to the papers and pick up twigs and limbs. I'll have a few little textures in here that I can add. Take some of that out later if I want. And I think on another layer, I'm gonna come over here to the brushes that I've made. And as you can see, I've made some leaf brushes. I've got a couple of different kind. Let's try these Impressionist leaves. Let's come over here with um, another paper texture. Up the scale. If I don't add a paper texture, It'll look something like this. Let's go to a soft cover. You can see the difference that that makes. I've got this brush really small, so let's make it larger. And this is basically just for textures, but I will add these. Just a, a suggestion of leaves. Let's warm that up a little bit more. Bring that scale up a little bit. Let's leave that in the same hue and let's bring it down here. Bring it over here. A little bit more intense color right in the center here. Okay, so I'm going to come over here with a chip bristle brush and I'm going to do a grainy soft alpha blend and give myself some grasses. I think I will do that on another layer. That way, let's do a larger brush. I can lighten that layer if I like. So I kind of like that better. Add what I want. Let's get a little bit cooler color over here on this side. Get back in here and lay some of this dark under over, over that. I'm just tapping. I'm going to take a little bit of that color and add right there. And let's take some of this pretty purple and add here. And let's take a few of these little greens and add there. And come back in with some white, kind of some negative painting over that. And 
stay up here in these lighter values. This is a little bit flatter area. And then I can come back over here with the pointed rigger and do a few limbs. I'm gonna just kind of add a few little limbs in here. and decorate however you want with some details. And this is a very simplified version of what I've got here. As that one probably took me about five hours. And so you can add whatever textures you want. And to make it more interesting, can add some rocks, whatever you need to do to help bring all these colors together. And sometimes I will just take and add speckles or splashes or something else. And so you'll have this pretty little tree going. Uh, I can also, I also have some other brushes that I've made that will give you a little bit more of the leaf look if you like uh, but gosh the sky is really the limit on these particular digital paintings that come in here I'm gonna up that and add some colors let's just put it on a plain paper And add a few little leaves out here. Give me a little bit more of that kind of leaf look. Blend some of that in. A little bit of droopiness here. I don't want to go too bright over there. But that little bit in that dark area suggests leaves. And sometimes that's all you need for people to think that you've got a lot of leaves painted in your piece. So let's add another layer. And let's bring this opacity down a little bit. And let's come over here and add, let's add a little bit of blue to this side and how about a little bit of this purple add up through there um, I can come in with the brushy brush and paint some darks in which will actually deepen this tree a little bit and come over here to this particular layer you can see the difference that that makes uh, let's come up here Add some of that in here. So, lots of cool stuff that you can do with your tree to really make it pop. So I hope this helps you learn a little bit about the digital painting and my process. And remember, the sky's the limit on what you can create. You're only limited by your imagination.